What's up guys? Welcome to your second Java programming tutorial. Uh, a few updates from the first one. First, I've upgraded the quality of the video so it should be a lot easier to see. It should be a lot more crystal clear and everything should be uploaded in high def and you'll know what exactly is going on the entire time. Second, I've also changed the audio settings so there shouldn't be any static in the background anymore and you don't need to worry about not being able to hear me. Okay, what we're going to be going over is setting up and running your first Java program. Uh, what you're going to do is you're, wanna get, you're going to want to go and open Eclipse and at the top in the upper left hand corner you're going to see File. You're going to click that and you're going to hit New. There's going to be a whole bunch of options here and you want to pick Java Project. This is going to start like its own folder so that it knows exactly where it's at and it can run everything in it if it needs to. Uh, we're going to give it a name. I'm going to name it YouTube. You can name it whatever you want. <clears throat> and I wouldn't worry about anything else over here because none of it's really going to pertain to you yet. So we're just going to hit finish. And you're going to see over here under Package Explorer, there's going to be a little folder looking icon that says YouTube next to it. It's not going to have anything in it really except for this other folder called Source, but that's also empty. And your, your library system and your system libraries, which is going to include a bunch of things that's needed in order for the program to run as it needs to. There's two things, there's two ways we can open up a class. A class is basically what Java looks at as a whole. It looks at it first and it tries to find out everything about it um, by looking at the start of the program all the way down to the end of the program. <clears throat> so what we're going to need to do is make our first class so there's two ways you can do it. One, you can either right click on your source or your YouTube folder, hit new, and go to class. You're going to be given a bunch of options on here and what you're going to need to do is type in the name that you want to make it. So I'm going to make this I'm going to make it hello YouTube because basically I'm just going to make a very simple program with you and go through step by step what everything means in it. So we're going to run that. It'll take a few seconds and load. And you'll see you have this little text area. There's not much to it. It doesn't really say much in it, but there's a few key things that I need to point out before we start. Um, one, it's always going to start with public class, and it's going to be the name of the class. If it's not the exact same name that you have over here, like this is hello youtube.java, this is not hello youtube, then it will not run properly. Also, <clears throat> Brackets, like parentheses, uh, curly brackets, square brackets, are all used to show the start and the end of a specific thing that needs to be ran. So whenever this is open bracket right here, it's going to say that everything in inside those two open brackets is going to be run as soon as this program starts. And then whenever it hits end, that means it's going to be the end of it. It's not going to need. A, it's not even going to look at that anymore. <clears throat> What we're going to do is inside, if it doesn't tab it for you, you should automatically go and tab it just because you want it to look good. You don't want it to look like crap the entire time. Otherwise, it's just going to be a pain and you're not going to know what's going on with it. And you're just going to be like, huh, what did this mean? Okay, what we're going to type in is public static void main string with two square brackets args. You're going to get to the end of it and you're going to want to open up another curly bracket, hit enter. Eclipse is awesome because it'll automatically put the ending bracket in for you so you don't need to worry about it. Now, <clears throat> let me go over this first line that we just had. You're not going to need to worry about public static void just yet, but just to tell you, void means it has absolutely no return. You're not going to need to worry about it ending with anything special. Main the class is always going to look for the main the main sequence, what it needs to do. And this is always going to be the first thing that's ran immediately. It's going to look at that before it looks at anything else, and it's going to run that. <clears throat> Sorry if my voice is a little, like, scratchy. I just got done eating dinner, and it was delicious, and I still have food in my throat. Yes. Saving it for later. Okay. The next thing that you need to look at is the string args. 
basically these are just arguments, things that you input in order for it to be looked at first, or in order for it to be included into the main, um, into the main, what's it called? Method, into the main method, that's it, my bad. <clears throat> And I wouldn't worry about this. This is just default. It's recommended that you put it in here. Sometimes you don't need it. Other times it requires it. Like, I think if I were to get rid of it, it's not going to make any difference between what it looks like. But for now, we're just going to keep that in there. And we're going to go down to the next line. What I'm going to be going over today inside of all this is how to make a simple output message. <clears throat> All it's going to do is it's going to display certain, or it's going to display certain words or numbers, and then you're going to be able to know exactly, like it's going to output everything that you wanted it to output. So we'll start with system out print line. I'm going to go over this real quick. System is basically not the computer that you're running on, but kind of like the compiler. It's going to be used what puts it all together and I guess like it's going to it's going to be like your main your main way of inputting or outputting um, out which is right after the dot um, out means that it's going to be output to the screen print line is just a specific way to print it there's other but there's other ways of doing it like print, print F, and print line are I think the main three, which print will print it normally and it won't automatically go down a line at the end of it. Print line is going to automatically skip a line down whenever it's, whenever it's done, whenever it's done outputting that. So you don't, you don't need to worry about like putting a new line modifier in there, but I wouldn't worry about that because we're nowhere near that. And You'll notice that inside, oh, printf. Printf is a formatting type. Like to make it look good into like columns and rows, you need to use printf. And I'll go over that in a later tutorial. Um, you'll notice the quotes in here. If you've ever taken like an English class, you'll know that quotes are used whenever like you're trying to say, you're trying to say this specific thing. Like in a book, if you read something, it's what's being said. It's not what's being like described. Like we'll think of all this as sort of like the description, and this is going to be what they actually say. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in "Hello YouTube!" exclamation point because you always have to have a "Hello YouTube!" with an exclamation point. There can't be no exclamation point. Otherwise, it's not going to work. No, I'm just kidding. It'll work without it because you can put anything inside of these two quotations, and it'll take it. It'll output it to the screen. And then the last thing you need to put on your first line is you need to put a semicolon. A semicolon is just like a dot with a comma right underneath it. It basically means read this line right here and that's it. It's going to go through that and as soon as that's over, it's going to move on to whatever's next. It's not going to come back to this ever again. So what we're going to do, since we've, ran all, uh, since we've typed out all this, we're going to go up and I'm going to show you a couple of buttons that you need to know about. This thing that looks like a bug, it means debug. It's going to tell you all of the, it's going to tell you all the errors, all of the warnings, things that you need to know, um, like whenever you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your program. That's going to do it and that's going to catch anything before it goes and screws up completely. This play looking button is going to run it. It's basically going to compile your entire program, it's going to save it, and it's going to do exactly what you had typed in this entire in this entire block. And then this one is, I actually don't know what it's used for. I've never used it before. Um, I would never worry about it because you're not going to need it. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this green run button. It looks like this little triangle inside of a green circle. We're going to click that. It's going to come up with this save and launch, um, this save and launch window. and what I suggest you do is make sure this is always clicked at the bottom. Always save resources before launching. This is going to make sure that it always saves your program. Because otherwise it's not... Oof. 
otherwise it's not going to save it and it's not going to run it because you'll hit cancel or you'll hit OK and this window will just be repetitive and you'll always see this window every time you do it. So I suggest you just hit the always save resources before launching and then hit OK. What you're going to notice is at the bottom of the screen there's going to be this little window down here and inside of this tab that says console. System out is, in, is outputting to the console which is right here and everything inside of these two quotation marks are being output to the screen because that's what this whole line here was for. System out, which tells it that it's not going to be an internal change, it's going to be output and everybody's going to see what it is. Print line is the type, so you're going to like know that it's going down the next line. And you can tell because if it was just normal print, it would end right here and you couldn't click down or you couldn't like you couldn't use your arrow keys and go down or up but it automatically went down in line so you don't need to worry about anything else popping up after here. Um, that's all I'll go over for you or that's all I'll go over with for you for today. I'll see you next time. Please subscribe and there will be definitely more videos coming out soon. Have a good time and practice with it. You can, oh, one more thing. You can make these as much as you want. Like if I were to put another one right here that says hi, it's going to input this one and since the line automatically went down the line it's going to go in and it's going to output this one. So whenever we run this one again it's going to do hello YouTube and then it's just going to say hi. Just like we want. So you can experiment with that. I suggest you do. Practice with it before you move on to the next tutorial because then you will know like you'll have more you'll have more experience with getting started and you'll pick up on it quick because once you actually start getting into it, it actually starts getting to be a lot of fun and you get to look and you get to make a lot of really awesome programs. So I'll see you later. Please subscribe. Thanks.